Done. Welcome to the latest Watercolors Aquarium Gallery podcast brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're actually enjoying a little bit of sunshine today. Don't get used to it. I know, right? It is Michigan after all. <laughs> I don't did, trust it. Did you know that we are the second cloudiest region in the country? Yeah, I think Seattle beats us barely, yes. right? That's it. That's it. Actually, we're here to talk about saltwater stuff. My name is Ben. I'm Amy. And I'm Charles. Today we are talking about nano saltwater aquarium fish. This is like a much requested topic. Yeah, those nanos have been taking off really well, but some of the fish are still almost completely unknown to most people. So it's kind of fun to be able to talk about them. I had a hard time with this list because there are some that there are some fish that just absolutely have to be talked about. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had to put those on my list. There are some fish that I know about that I bet you guys don't. And I really wanted to talk about some of those no, fish. No, Ben, you don't know anything we don't know. Right. <laughs> There's some fish that every once in a while you see in the hobby. And when, when you do, it's like, oh, they're, you, just, you, you want to snag them because they're so cool. Um, and, then, and then it was about where do we draw the line? And I think we might just have some fun. We'll call it lively discussion <laughs> about drawing those lines. I, uh, this Because we did a nano reef fish podcast. Yeah. Um, this one, I tried very hard to approach this one differently, and I was purposely trying to find where I was like, what's the line here? Because uh, in the nano reef one, I had, without provocation, put the self-imposed limitation of 10 gallons or less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this time I was, we had said 20 gallons or less, so I'm like, okay, you got to... You got to work within the 10 to 20 gallon range and make it like the most of what you can with it. And right. see, that's like the <coughs> tricky part with this discussion for me, because there were so many like, well, I don't know. Like, that's the thing with nano reefs is you're already sort of pushing what is conventionally accepted. You know, mm -hmm. that idea of the big reef aquarium. So I don't know that I've heard of anyone putting any of these fish ex with the exception of like one or two in a 20 gallon tank, just because they don't like just because people don't. So this yeah. is like what I think would work on so a lot of cases. Did you guys come up with like your top five favorite or top five that you'd all put in the same tank? Not in the same tank. Okay. No, me neither. Um, a lot of mine were like, if you did one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of mm -hmm. approach this with the mentality of like, if you're only going to have one fish in this tank size, make it count. Yeah. Okay. A lot of mine could go together. It's just I don't know if they could go together in 20 gallons. I kind of went with, uh, when we talked about the 20 gallon size, I thought that was a little big. Ha <laughs> ha, good. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> my, my, how the turntables. Most <laughs> of the fish I'm going to talk about, um, you could do in, in smaller than 20. And actually all of them, I got it. There's some that just have to be mentioned. That yeah. would be, if you have a 20 gallon tank, you could do this fish, right? And, and they got to be talked about. So I'm going to try to stick to five, but others, like some of them, I would be comfortable. And I'm saying this out loud. I would be comfortable putting some of these fish in a two and a half gallon salt water. Bum, bum, bum. And I would say out of the three of us for nano reef tanks, you're probably generally the most conservative. I think, I think that's what we're going to find <laughs> yeah. out here. I guess I, so. Shortly. I was like, uh, maybe this is a good point to bring up. Like last week, Ben and I were debating purple firefish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what a minimum tank size is there. Yeah. And he and I yeah. did not agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We got to, we got to get into this. Yep, then. We do. Amy, I think, uh, I think we go with our traditional. Okay. And you start. All right. I will choose a good, easy one to start with. And my first thought actually went to those little sunburst antheus. But they actually get bigger than I thought they did. I thought oh, they right. only got like two or three inches long and that they act kind of like a hawkfish. I thought they would be really cool. But I realized that the tiny version of what I like out of that fish are the clown gobies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they have that little perchy behavior. They have those cute chubby cheeks and they're just really peaceful, really fun to watch little tiny fish. They get about an inch and a half long. Some of them even smaller. Yeah. Yep. Um, that'd probably be a good candidate for a five or 10, maybe smaller if you really wanted to do it. I think you could do a clown goby in a five gallon tank easily. Yeah. 
There's a close member of that called the panda goby. Oh, I don't know Have that you seen one. Those? They're like going to be an inch. Yeah, they're picture. It's going to be a look them up episode. Yeah, a teeny yellow clone goby with black fins. Yeah, that and that's really oh, I know what you're talking yeah. about. I thought I wrote down the scientific name for that one. Even let's see. No, I didn't write down scientific. Oh, name. they are really cute. Aren't they adorable? And they are. I would put that is one that I would wow. put in a two and a half gallon tank. Just so you know, this is kind of how I'm going to. Ooh, and they're a Pasolapora specialist. Yes. Oh, that yes. would be adorable. Wow. Yes. I'm going to kind of, because there was so much to talk about, that I'm going to kind of do this with a number of fish. Yeah, we might need to rush through a little bit. name one that's like part of it, <laughs> I'm going to include the other ones that I put in the same yeah. category. And um, the Congobies, they're not that complicated, but they do have like a couple of different fun colors to choose. So you just get the best one. There's... A couple of great yellows. Mm -hmm. The panda is yellow with black fins. I think I like the green the best. The green Although is very the cool. the panda might jump up the list. I just didn't know about that There's one. There's a red one and a black one too. That's so cool. Some of them are very specialized in eating some very specific kinds of coral. So the yellow one, for example, and actually the, the panda eats pasalapora. They that eat about small amounts of it, but in a nano tank, you probably don't want to keep... Is Pasolipora. it? But is it the type of thing if you did like one or two in a ten or fifteen, you might be able to keep up? Uh, maybe. I think you might need to be pushing more like a forty or fifty. So we talked about in the Nano Reefs podcast the idea of like having an experimental tank if you've got a big one. I would yeah. love to try out some of that stuff, like those predator prey interactions. Where wh how far can you push? That would be perfect. Yeah. Yep, that would be perfect. I think that would be. Even, especially if it was attached to the big tank, mm -hmm. just slightly, even with like on a drip. Or in your refugium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that, that, you know, starts it off to me with an easily attainable, inexpensive, easy to keep, true nano fish. Those mm -hmm. are fish that would get lost in a 90 or 100 gallon aquarium. I I've seen them. I've seen them get lost in like a sixty cube before. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Excellent choice. I like it. Cool. Charles, where do you want to start? Where shall we begin? So I'll start off with saying, I did not put a single goby on my list. How could you? Because I almost I, did all gobies. I. <laughs> I knew one of you would do that, and I also told myself. <laughs> That's the obvious play. <laughs> um, but it's also, the obvious play because it's the right play. I would argue that, so like a lot of gobies that people do in nanos, I feel like would be better done in a larger tank. So like instead of having a group of uh, like a pair of Trima gobies in a five gallon, if you had like a hundred gallon with like a station with like six of them. You'd never see them. I don't know. I've seen some 300 gallon displays with them just up front and center. Mm. I think you'd have to get lucky. I think you would have to do an actual group. Not that's that's a good the point. trick. And then, um, or like a lot of the shrimp goby pairs, like uh, in one of our previous t podcasts, I talked about like tertiary relationships you can do in larger tanks. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I just feel like that's better in a larger tank. So uh, I tried to find like centerpiece fish for a 20 gallon tank. Okay. And, uh, and 20 gallons, 20 gallons, not smaller, not smaller. Okay. Um, I have one that I'm like, yeah, 15 gallon. All right. But I'm starting off with coral crouchers. <laughs> <laughs> AKA I don't know gumdrop gobies. Mm. Exactly. But, but actually a scorpion. Exactly. Yeah. We had me that pen. I got to cross that one off my list. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. See, this fish came up in my research, but it's not one I'm super familiar with. So I didn't know how doable they are. They're amazing. They look like the kind of fish that's too good to be true. Like it has yeah. to be, it has to only eat live food or something. Nah, easy. Caracanthus madagascarensis. Gumdrops, gumdrop scorpion fish. They're so dumb looking. Yeah. They look like they should be part of the clown goby group. Oh, Madagascar. Yeah. They're almost like a cross between a little scorpion fish, a clown goby, and an angler fish. Yeah, scorpion fish are a group of fish that that is kind of that inaccessible. Like they, they're just kind of a difficult to keep. Yeah. So maybe this is the good. Yeah, uh, these are good. Like the good replacement for them. Yeah. Don't keep them with the panda gobies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I set centerpiece. <laughs> right. And I would put that fish easily in a 10 gallon tank. Yeah. And I don't Maybe disagree with even that. a five. I mean, that, those inch and a half, two inches for the Madagascarensis. Well, and you said like a uh, angler fish, like crossover. They're yeah. not super active. No, no. But um, there was just something appealing to me of like a, wow, a scorpion fish in a tiny package. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what all do you know about them? Um, not a whole lot, honestly. Um, I know that they are uh, like they're scorpion fish, so they have that predatory nature. But given that their size, um, their prey size is, believe it or not, things that like mycids instead of, you know, other fish. Yeah. <laughs> they look at you like they're a scorpion fish, though. See, that's what like, I want. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Let's like, go. Really picture a really high pitched voice doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me out. Come on. Right. <laughs> what's, uh, what's Bite it? your kneecaps off. <laughs> what's it called? Um, the children's book, The Grouchy Ladybug or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they have little dog syndrome. Yeah. Little, that's, <laughs> that's exactly it. So uh, that's uh, where I wanted to start my list. Perfect. It's a great, uh, it's similar to the clown goby, just a little bit bigger, a little bit different paint job. Yeah. And venomous. Yeah. Yes. Which makes them badass. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, when people are like, I want a badass fish, <laughs> then I say things like coral crouchers. They're like, what? Coral croucher? <laughs> Thumb drop. Yeah. All your badass fish are algae eaters. This one's venomous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. It looks like cool. he wants to kill you. Uh, all right, yep. Ben, should you do like five at a time? Or I'm looking at this know, list. Right? It's 30 yeah. species long. <laughs> I am actually going to do a genus. Fair enough. Uh, I I put coral crouchers. That's a genus. That is a genus. That's the the genus uh, Caracanthus. Yep. Yeah. I thought about doing the and actually there are two or three regularly available fish in that genus, and Madagascarensis and oh I there's another one that's regularly available. Okay. And inch and a half. Yeah. Inch maybe. I mean they're teeny little cute little buggers. No, but I I I hear what you were saying about shrimp gobies but one of the one genera in particular i think actually lends itself very well to small tanks okay i know where you're going stonogobius yep <laughs> yeah yeah actually stonogobiops is the the genus so i had to pick the whole genus and that's the yashahazi the antenna goby there's actually seven different species in that genus those two are available. The Dracula is sometimes available. And the other ones just look basically like those same gobies, just with a little bit different paint job. See, I'm going <clears> to <throat> say this right now. Uh, you picking this genus instead of an individual species in it. If you picked just one species in the genus, I would have felt like you were doing a disservice to the entire genus. Right. That's exactly right. Because yeah. it would have just been, yeah, but what about... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no, this should have been brought up as a genus. The yeah. yellow rose antenna goby, a.k.a. banded antenna goby or all kinds of other fun hyphen antenna goby hyphen banded goby that's all the same fish that's all stone goby ups nematodus great name by the way <laughs> i know right mm-hmm. <laughs> that that was like one of those fish that started getting me excited about saltwater fish i remember seeing it in a small tank in a store a number of years ago um and then i saw the yashahazis and was like whoa they come in red <laughs> Or candy colored yeah. and a Yashahazi paired with a candy pistol shrimp. Oh, what a combination. It's hard to beat that. It's amazing. That. Right. I think I like the Yashahazi better because I'm supposed to because it's more expensive. But I think that's the only reason. That's sort of fair enough. Yeah. Like it's something to aspire to. Right. But the others. There's you, no sacrifices that you're making going with one of the ones you can find and afford. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And in that whole that whole genus, the Dracula is an expensive one. That to me is it looks like the antenna goby, only it has some r- little red, teeny little pinstriping in between the black stripes. That's it. Um, the Yasha, oh Yasha Hazi. Thank you. You bet. That's a tough one. Um, what makes it? Do you know off the top of your head what makes it more expensive? Like if we're looking at firefish prices based on depth that you're diving what's the deal Ooh, here i don't know if it's <clears throat> it is uh, a fish with red spots okay which 
often lends itself to a deeper water species, but I don't know that specifically. Okay. Um, obviously it's availability Mm -hmm. or, you know, is it harder to get because it's found in less common areas? Is it just less common or is it found deeper? I don't know. Okay. Just curious. But they're so pretty. They're all gorgeous. Yep. They are sexable. Uh, rising tide successfully produced a uh, commercial level uh, Yashahazis. So and they I'm do well it. together as pairs, right? They'll live in the same burrow. Oh yeah, yeah. The, a pair of those with the goat with the sh- with the shrimp will buddy up and cuddle and you know do all those things you want them to do. It's really cute. <laughs> that yeah. behavior, that relationship, like it's. You're going to talk about it every time you talk about nano saltwater tanks. Right. And it can't be like overstated how cool and fun it is to watch. It's amazing. Yep. It's amazing. I'm just trying. I paused because I was trying to think of as far as not just home aquariums, but like pets in general. Is there a more compact package of symbiosis? And unless you're getting into something like, well, technically zoosynthale, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Mitochondria. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's say you're talking like macro level, yeah. Symbiosis. Observable Sexy symbiosis. shrimp and uh, maxi mini carpet anemones. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. That's a good one. Though. They max out at about two to two and a half inches with all of the species in the genus. They're Ease, they're hardy. They easily take aquarium food. They they belong in lots of tanks. We've never had a problem with them in QT no. unless someone was dumb and left the lid off. Well, yeah, yeah they you, know, you gotta watch them with overflows. <laughs> that's part of why they're so good for and nano tanks. For a small fish, that's pretty impressive. Not that we have necessarily more difficulties with a small fish. It's just easier for something to go wrong, and they yeah. do okay when things go wrong. Yeah. And smaller fish means smaller mouth means sometimes a little more challenging to feed, but mm-hmm. these guys don't have that <laughs> no issue. No problems. Definitely a fish for the uh, breeder lab at some point, I hope. So there we go. Yes, mm-hmm. I cheated. I did a genus. That's not of cheating. Just this genus is <laughs> deserved to be a genus. Um, I, I'll count this as my next one if we want. I wasn't even necessarily going to spend a lot of time on it, but I definitely cheated because it's related. I just put shrimp tanks. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think there are a lot of permutations of that that could work really well in some really small tanks. Pair of coral banded shrimp, the sexy shrimp thing, cleaner shrimp. Those are all cool, active, outgoing pets that you could absolutely have in a nano tank and right. not have some of the drama that comes with fish. Right. It's true. <laughs> that doesn't have to be your run because it's really not a fish. So. No, it's not. And I don't, we don't need to spend a ton, a ton of time on it either. Right. You um, just had to do your bug plug. But like, bug seriously. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, salt water has the best bugs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Indubitably. Yes. All right. Um, What's your real one, Amy? All right. My real one is going to be a little bit more palatable to this group. I put down the little possum wrasse. Of course. Hang on. I got to scratch that one off. <laughs> the my ones list. we just got are too cute. Like they shouldn't be allowed to be that cute. And just for people who don't know what this is and want to look it up, that's the wet morella genus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Three species in the genus. Mm-hmm. And they Ooh. all stay under three, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And two is really their size i'm a little thrown off because the ones we got are huge they're two full inches full grown (laughs) (laughs) um the patterning they give you a lot of what people are looking for in a lot of the bigger saltwater fish they give you a gorgeous color gorgeous patterns really interesting behaviors and personalities a little bit shy but in a small tank that's not going to be a big problem they'll still be out don't forget the big cute puppy dog eyes yes (laughs) unless you get into some of the, the like um like the true pygmy gobies. Yeah. For me, this is the like epitome of this does not belong in a large tank. You will never see right. it. Mm-hmm. Right. And I would put one in a 10. I think so. I'd probably do a 15 just because I think you might get a little bit more behavior out of them, but I wouldn't judge anyone that put them in a 10 yeah. either. I think it would be just fine in a 10. Like one in that, when we had that 10 gallon set up with the spaghetti leathers, one in there mm-hmm. would have been 
perfect i mm-hmm. feel like because they don't they're not so. zoomers they're like when people think about rasses you think about that like torpedo body yeah. shape really fast zooming around making use of all the space they're very deliberate they almost act like a copper band butterfly i think that's a good analogy kind of that hover and hide yeah hover or hide stare at the rocks and peck you know <laughs> yeah. pretend Whoa. i'm not actually a fish as i drift effortlessly in the current uh, i'm a piece of algae <laughs> <laughs> it's very sleepy <laughs> it's the only wrasse i could come up with that i would put in a 20 gallon tank or smaller i got one it's up for the one that i hate but i it's that one <laughs> <laughs> guys i put it too did you I, i'm putting it Funny. I have a specific reason for this one. But though. I think a 20 long. Yeah. 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 Because if you love that fish, that's the right take to keep it in because it'll kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> and they are personable. They're flashy when they want to be. They're Okay, we got to let the cat out of the bag on this one. And oh, you yeah, guys, we didn't even you say. You guys picked alternates, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you guys just plenty. discuss those. We're talking about six line wrasses. Yep. Which I hate. <laughs> you, you, I think the rant is warranted here. The rant is warranted. Okay. <clears throat> so it takes a little bit of, of uh, RAS biology and behavior to know why I hate six line RASs. And I think we can circle back to why that makes them really cool for a setup like this. <laughs> it does. And you know, you're not wrong that if it's the only fish you're going to put in a 20 long, it's kind of a cool choice. Yeah. I wouldn't because I would stare at it the whole time and go, I just want to get my revenge on you for everything (laughs) you've done. (laughs) So why am I so anti six line wrasses? Wrasses all go through four distinct life stages. Those distinct life change stages are juvenile phase, female phase, male phase, and super male phase. (laughs) And pretty much all, all the races I know of go through that. Some of those phases and some of those races are so distinct that in, in the beginning of taxonomy, we thought there were just more species because they're so incredibly different. The color patterns on all four phases change completely in most races. They do not change distinguishably on six-line races, so you don't know when they change. Juvenile six-line races are very peaceful little fish. Female six-line races are very peaceful, not quite as little, just fine fish. Male six-line races are even kind of okay-ish. Six-line races, when they mature into that super male stage, wake up and want to kill everything. (laughs) Now, that usually takes about two or three years the average life of a marine aquarium hobbyist is usually less than two years. So many beginner books and many beginner aquarist sites cite six-line wrasses as great beginner fish. They should have a little caveat that says, we know you're probably going to get out of the hobby in two years, so you won't know they're going to turn into ballistic assholes. Pardon my French. (laughs) Uh, My mom likes the terminology rassholes. (laughs) Rassholes. Yes. It's such a shame, too, because it sets people up for failure at the time where they're just starting to get their confidence up. It also makes people mad at me when I tell them no. Yeah. That's Uh, true. I I really want to put in perspective to some people how insane these wrasses are. We have one in the store right now. Ben knows where it is. Do you Uh know where it is? It's in with the Maroon Clown, and it's just fine. Uh (laughs) And it'll be just fine for two years. Yeah. 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 And then it will kill the maroon clown. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. That's, Maybe. That's a fight I don't want to see. No. no. We don't no. want to see fights if we can avoid them. This is just right. asking for a fight. Yep. On the flip side, these are a beautiful fish. They've got pinks, purples, oranges. They are six not, lines. Six yeah. lines and very beautiful striping, distinct. very distinct. Mm-hmm. Um, very outgoing, very hardy, incredibly hardy. And in a nano tank, having a little bit of wiggle room and water quality Mm -hmm. is a nice Mm -hmm. thing to have. Yeah. So I think this is a great candidate of, if you really like six line wrasses, set up a 20 and make that your pet fish. Yeah. It would be a good one. Yeah. 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 And it's not going to be stressed by being alone. Some of these like individuals that I was thinking of would make me a little nervous on their own because they're, they want to see a big reef of fish out right. swimming around. 
I actually kind of walked to the six line RAS backwards because I was thinking my first thought was that uh, Candy Basslet. The one that's crazy oh, yeah. expensive. That's that on you can't my list. Get. Actually, the Swiss Guard is, but yeah, we're yeah. going to talk and about it now. And then I was like, well, no, Swiss Guard's a little more available, but still really expensive. And they're shy. But if you want like bright color, bright striping, the Six Line Rass has it. I, I don't, it's I cannot cheap. disagree with any of these statements. <laughs> they are cheap, they are hardy, they are bold, they are beautiful. Just keep them by themselves. And you hate them. <laughs> I do. I do. And and I hate them because people have gotten mad at me about that fish mm-hmm. and told me I'm wrong. Recently. Yeah. Recently. It's a similar story to the Chromis, right? It works right. until it doesn't. It works until it doesn't. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Did I, I, I'm sorry. I stole yours. Nope, don't Actually, care. I sold, stole no, both of you, yours. We, yeah, because you were talking about possum wrasses. Yes. I and think that we was wrapped yours. up possum wrasses. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, we decided to do a tangent with the six lines that was yes. on both ears. So it doesn't count against either. You guys still have like that's not yep. on there. You can move on to the next one. All right. but, I'll let you talk about basslets. But I'm going to say Swiss Guard basslet yeah. is my next one. <laughs> <sighs> In a 20? In a 20. I think they would be just fine. I mean, it's what, three inches? Give or take. Yeah. yeah. Depending on how much you're feeding it and how long you have. <laughs> so... Uh, let me go on record by saying I strongly disagree with that statement. See, I put it on here knowing you yeah. would say that. Yeah, I think that that is a fish that needs 40 gallons or more. No. See, yes. for me, I planned this tank as being very similar to the six-line RAS tank where it's like it's by itself, it's the fish. And the idea I had in my head was... so. Um, Swiss guards are interesting to me because they, so the candy basslets are as expensive as they are because they are a true deep water fish. 500 feet. The Swiss guards are actually not really a deep water. They're usually found in the first 120 feet, but they are reclusive during the day, Mm -hmm. which makes them really hard to find. (laughs) And so... The this tank appealed to me because I was like, so this would be in my head a reverse light cycle tank where you can that is have a fun it, thought. You have it like moonlit during when you would be around, and then that would be when it's most active. And then maybe you could have like um like the bright lights on as like a night light as some people like to have in their house. And um I don't know why, but that just that different way of keeping a tank other than like you would standard reef just kind of interested me and if you i would specifically want to structure it with lots of overhangs so even when it's like lit up it would be wanting to peek out and stuff i'm still not sold on that in 20 gallon tank (laughs) maybe it's just because i know i mean so that fish during the day it's not super active yeah but when it's time for it to be active, it is it is a fast moving, long, skinny, active fish. When it's time, yeah, I'm just not sure about it. <sighs> See, I think right now you're experiencing exactly how I feel about tangs and tanks in general. <laughs> but for some reason, the basslets I'm a little bit more comfortable with because they specifically a Swiss Guard because its lifestyle is to live inside the reef structure so i'm like yes it's fast but it's maneuverable okay here's a question i don't know if this is gonna make it like worse what would you feel if it was a royal grama instead i Uh, I wouldn't put a royal grama in a 20 gallon either okay i would but i wouldn't put a royal grama and i don't i would do a dotty back of some sort it's (laughs) it's actually kind of a comparable fish it's just more available, cheaper, and about the same size. Yeah. So I was, you know, if, it, if you were okay with the Royal Grama, I was wondering if it was just about the prestige. No. It, uh, 30 gallons for either fish. Maybe, maybe a 20 long. I'm comfortable with the 20 long. I just feel that's a fish that needs a dither, and that's why I ended up backing off of it. Mm-hmm. But I also have never watched them at night. Yeah. So I don't know if it's because in my experience, they're very retiring, very lurking, very shy. Well, their lifestyle is they are not out when the light is on. 
Right. Yeah. They so, are a nocturnal predatory fish. I'd be interested to see if like how by themselves they feel in a tank at like when right. they're in their element. And I've never seen that before. All right. So here's here's the concession I'll do. With a royal grandma and a, a Swiss guard. 20 long. Two or three years aquarium experience. Somebody who is monitoring nitrate levels regularly. And willing to do, and, and willing, willing to, and able to do extra water extra changes. Extra water changes to, to keep water quality pristine. Because that's the other thing with a fish like that. The, the, they are very susceptible to water quality issues. Where You know, a six line is going to end up adult size pretty similar. Yeah. Maybe even a little I bit bigger. bigger. And m- but, probably more active too. Yeah. But water quality is just not a big issue with them with a royal grandma with a swiss guard water quality is definitely going to be a concern and it'll be a lot harder to maintain in 20 than in 30 but i would really rather see the swiss guard in 40 or 50 honestly no. when you said swiss guard and I, when i was looking at it i didn't even have this thought but when you said it the picture of like a 40 breeder some rock shelves one of those and like four to six of those CLI cardinals popped into my head. Mm-hmm. And now I'm excited about that tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a cool tank. Yep. Well, well true. I figure we're probably going to end up back here on some of our others. So maybe we should move on and right. argue well, about right. this okay. more later too. So, uh, if you don't mind, I had a few alternates that I put in here. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I list them off? Cause I feel like for you, they're going to be mm-hmm. similar mm-hmm. in the same vein. I don't want to, hear what you have to say about sure um and i don't want to go into depth with them let's just do a quick like two minute maybe on each one yep chalk bass a five inch fish hmm yeah definitely not a chalk bass for a 20 gallon tank what about a falco hawkfish Three inch hawkfish yeah. that perches. I would I would I looked at that one and, and almost put it on my list. Yep. So I would definitely consider See, a Falco Hawk. They say three inch for chalk bass too. That's really? actually why I put it on I my list. I feel like I've seen them bigger than that. Because I put it down on my list as an alternate just in case yeah. the like conversation went around to it and I was like, it's a tiny grouper. Yeah, it's a tiny grouper, but look at the forked tail on that fish. I know. Right? That is a fast moving it's more like a teeny little tuna than it is like a teeny little grouper. Yeah, and that's you're only making me want it more. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's fast moving. So I would not a chalk bass. I would say no. The falco hawk. I would say sure. Okay. So let's say chalk bass. No, falco hawk is your tiny hawkfish for a twenty gallon. Yes. Okay. Let's move on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> have you ever heard of a pencil moray yes Mm-mm. the little uh nano golden yeah. yeah yeah they're called a pencil moray because a standard number eight pencil unsharpened same size wow yes gymnothorax no, uh melatramus gymnothorax do melatramus. they show up in the trade rarely but occasionally do they they're- eat I'm just going to end that question there. Do they eat? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> it. That's the fish you would put in the tank and you, you wouldn't put shrimp. Yeah. You wouldn't put fish in it. Like anything else you could put, you could keep this fish in a 10 gallon tank easily because it's a moray. It's inactive. It's going to hang out in a rock with yeah. its face out and wait for you to feed it. Um, but any other fish that you could put in that 10 gallon, it would also eat. Right. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah. But like, I, I mean like whenever the, I hear about these Oh, it's a cool, it's a nano predator fish, like the yeah. dwarf lion fish. It's like, it's too good to be true. It's not going to eat anything. You're, oh, no, you're these guys kill are it. like, eat them, feed them mice shrimp wow. on a little feeding stick and they'll eat it like a big moray will. I feel like a cute a, little package. Like little PE mice. Yeah. Because mm. those are yeah. larger. Some of, they could probably take some of the smaller krill too. Oh, you know, because they got a big mouth. Oh, yeah. that'd be so cool. Morays are a blast to keep. They're fantastic pets. Yes. They can be really well acclimated to you. Yep. Very, very personable. And this one probably can't rip your finger off, so that's a good... No, it might just have a, a, a hit on your fingernail. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. But but usually mores are not aggressive. They just get confused. Yeah. Well, they have <laughs> terrible eyesight. eyesight. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know if you're a your food or if you're a hand, right. but they may as well try. Try it and find out. Yeah. Oh, that so, would be yeah, awesome. Adorable little fish. They end up retailing for around 250 bucks. <laughs> if you're lucky. Yep. So they definitely <laughs> fall into that category of if you're going to spend that on the fish, you're probably going to take care of it. They're not going to mess with coral. I've seen them, some of the displays where it was a 10 or 15 gallon nano reef mm-hmm. that was like a tricked out nano reef. They don't <gasps> care about the bright lights. They're not going to touch your snails. They're probably okay with like a big cleaner shrimp. Because it's too big for them. Right. And Peppermint shrimp would be like snacks. but Sometimes fish recognize the cleaner and they leave it alone anyway. Right. So if it's like, it's too big for my mouth and also it's a friend. Yeah. 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 It's one of those that if you went just a little bigger, they would not be able to touch clownfish. So if you did a yeah, cool. 30 with a pair of clowns and that fish, oh, it'd be sweet. Like the mini versions of all the cool fish that you want to have. And <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah. well, I, I could have a 125, but I actually have a 40 long with a tiny moray little clown fish. Like, <laughs> you know. So here's where I'm going to get on my soapbox because this is exactly in the vein that I wrote a lot of my list. And I don't know why I didn't think of this fish. Sure. Because it's the... It's the perfect example of what I'm talking about here. A lot of people look at the price tag of this thing and they go, oh, wow, that's really expensive. I don't want to spend that. So they spend $1,000 more setting up a 125-gallon tank right. so that they can keep a larger moray. And right. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly true. Yeah, And a larger moray, probably in a tank that's going to be too small for it anyway. So it's like you're doing all this stuff to do to squeak by. Yeah. Right. When you could just have something really cool. You could have something really cool in a small package. And yes, the fish itself will cost you more. But maintaining a 15 gallon with a golden, with a pencil moray. I have actually even seen them in in like some of the pretty cool 180 gallon reef tanks Mm. with medium sized normal reef fish. And they're just this little accent up in the corner. And they hardly ever leave the little burrow and it's their spot. I love eels. Yep. It's a it's a cool one. It's a great one. <laughs> okay, now you have to get one for us. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> this right, is like a dangerous you. podcast because you, you're, we're going to get requests for these fish and some of them. Like, just be patient. We'll find it for you. You got to wait. I will find them. All of them. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to talk about, well, let's see. I've got three things left on my list, and I think they're all categories we will end up talking about regardless. Hmm. So I think I'm probably going to start with the one that is less likely to be on Ben's list. And I wanted to do damsels. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was looking at like, oh, well, well, you could do any of like the mean damsels and be able to do one of them. But I couldn't find one that I liked more than an Aelin's damsel. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe like a pair or even a little group of Aelin's damsels in a 20. I would say a pair. I don't know that you could do a group. I've heard reports that it's doable. Like that really? they won't really fight. They kind of colonize like the yellowtails do. But they're more expensive than the yellowtails. Right. Um, but I love fish that change color. That's like one of the things that really like gets me about a fish. And that's the appeal of the aliens when they're n- when they're kind of grouchy they're like a cool smoky black blue but then when they get really settled and comfortable that neon color that oh, they can just yeah. shine up in a moment is gorgeous still have the damsel personality but aren't super aggressive so you could probably do a couple of the things we've got we've talked about in that tank mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. um but that was my damsel choice i think it's a good one I actually considered putting damsels on my list, but I already had an overbloated list, so I did not do that. <laughs> I definitely had them on like a fourth alternate. Yeah. I, the yellow tails too, but we've talked about those a lot. Those are actually even on my list as a second alternate. <laughs> I, uh, as long as we're talking damsels, I also like to say a pair of chromis. Yeah. Or um, They're beautiful, personable fish. Yeah. Or a little yeah. ham- harem. Or um, I would much rather... I, I, I'm a little 
cautious when people are like, I want a pair of clowns in a 10. I'm like, uh. But in a 20? I in think a 20, that's, that's fine. fine. If you wanted to go a little bit smaller and you still wanted clownfish, I think if you went with pink skunks. Yeah. That's fine. Because they do not get as hefty as the Ocelaris do. I would easily put a pair of Ocelaris clowns in a 20 gallon tank. Yeah. No problem. But I feel like if you wanted, if you had a 15 or maybe even a 10, pink skunks are a much more viable option. I think you're right. I think a single clown is a viable option. Yeah. Like a clown pair is inherently a little bit aggressive. So I don't think that they're suffering by having a single. It just feels wrong. The little female down there looks happy and mean. Like, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. You don't have anybody to beat up on. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like a, you're really suffering by not being able to hurt anybody. <laughs> yeah. I was speaking more to the mentality that people want a pair because mm-hmm. they're used to seeing a pair. But also, I agree. I I think they might be happier alone, personally. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's no competition for food or nothing. Like, it feels wrong, but they don't care. <laughs> Fish aren't people. Some of them actually do want to be by themselves. Yeah. They actually prefer that. Well, I guess I know some people like that too, but <laughs> I am not one of those people. I don't hang out with them. Oh, wait. <laughs> that's their whole Good plan. Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put pink skunks on my list too. So yep. you stole another one of mine. I had those as like Oops. a second alternate too. I had the, I had, I had clowns, the four, four species of clowns is stuff we really should talk about during a nanofish discussion. That was Ocelaris, Percula, the pink skunks, and orange skunks. I think the um, the orange skunks are a little iffy for me just because I've seen females at four inches. Oh, have you? I have. Okay. But only in captive situations. Yeah. They apparently don't do that in the wild. <laughs> but um, I would also, since you wanted to open this box, I think Percula's might be my argument for the best nano clown. I've seen some large females, but I have never seen a male more than like an so, inch. <laughs> here's a question. Will a female get as big on her own? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, uh, the, we don't have a name for that cinnamon clown, but. Well, she didn't get that big on her own, though. She was in with a group of other clowns. Like, I don't know. The, the thing that I've always observed is the the group or the pair settles and then when the female is like distinguished she starts to grow so i was just i don't know if that triggers or not if they're by themselves i think the evolutionary reason for her to get so big is so that she can keep her boys in line which is necessary for to keep the pair viable but i also think that happens because the males make sure that she has the resources right so i think she grows bigger because she has the resources yeah which and means if she's by herself, she has the resources. Right. I'm just thinking through, like, we had that little midnight who never grew. That's true. I think that's her. Yeah. Could be. That's, you know, the genetics to make a midnight clownfish are a little messed up. Right. So maybe that does just encourage smallness. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. She, I think either way it would be fine. I'm just curious. She's been sorted into a couple other groups since then because now she lives in our basement Mm -hmm. and she has never gotten bigger yeah she's just tiny it's kind of interesting that she's with another pair and they don't care yeah no she doesn't seem to care either and and she was by herself for like years so maybe she's just an anomaly that i'm using to try and make connections (laughs) it could be it's so hard to tell right yeah but yeah clowns in a 20 i think is a home run yeah yep i agree don't put a bubble tip anemone in it No. no They don't need it. They've never seen it in their life. Half, half the time, they don't know what it is. Right. They don't need it. They will be happy. Even give them some, some soft corals. They'll pretend that's an anemone. They don't know. <laughs> Close enough. Uh-huh. <laughs> and honestly, the clowns are so adaptable that I'm like, I feel, I still feel like if you were doing a uh, fish only with live rock system, I would still have clownfish at the top of my suggestion list. It's like, they do not care if you have corals or not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there's so much personality in a clownfish it's so hard to beat yeah they're a true pet yep for sure my uh this is nick edited this out of the podcast because it's completely unrelated to the discussion <laughs> but uh my female uh blue striped clownfish has started eating from my fingers that's perfect <laughs> <laughs> yep that's perfect 
Where are we at? Was um, that-, that was. I've got one more on li- my list, but I'm but sure we're bound to get to it. <laughs> you stole my pink skunks. We I talked only have about seven damsels. Seven more on my list of five. That's fine. I I kept my list pretty light, right. knowing that we would have a lot to get through. Yeah, yeah. What I you got have, on your list. I have two with an alternate left. Okay. We'll just go ahead and take another turn, because. Okay. Okay. <sighs> You're I thought, looking at me like, <laughs> all right. He's no, ready to ben. fight. <laughs> Let's no. go. <laughs> no, so this one, I purposely, you and I have discussed this one so many, a uh, variation of this so many times that I purposely looked at this and spent time and energy trying to find a version that I think you would be okay with. Firefish? No. Oh, okay, Oh, cool. wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. where I thought this was going. Yeah, me too. Daddy back in a 10-gallon. So I <gasps> specifically, <laughs> I specifically chose. So in the past, and just for context for our listeners, we have yeah. typically this discussion has revolved around orchid daddy bags. Okay, that is not what I picked here. Alien goddess? No. Is it Siphopurpurensis again? No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's this is definitely a, deserves more space than that because that is a larger. Um, so I actually chose a complex. So the Pseudochromus cyanotania complex which would be the blue-sided, and then there's the cosincondata, uh, which is the orange tail, and the tapenosoma, which is the black margin dotty back. These max out at like 2.2 inches. Oh, they're I'm good pretty. With Let me see a picture. This is the blue line. Yeah, look at that thing. Whew. Wow. So you would like some of the unobtainium daddy backs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charles, start walking down to wherever they come from and go fishing. Here's the thing that's really strange to them about me. They used to be really common. They used to be a $20 daddy back. I remember seeing them all over the place. And I don't know what happened. But they still occasionally show up, apparently. They What's just, the most like common fish one. in the genus? Um, probably Tepanosoma, which is the, the black margin one because ORA breeds them occasionally. Yeah. I just stumbled upon that that exactly as you said it. Yeah. Oh, I really like that. Yep. Those I've seen. The, um, but the other two, uh, these ones were actually put on my radar because, um, I was watching some videos like a year ago of like Matt Pedersen talking about marine fish breeding and the. Uh, Sanotania is one he tried. Now, these are sexually dimorphic species of daddy backs. And in a 10 gallon, I would definitely discourage you from keeping a pair because <laughs> these are not right. particularly nice to each other. They're right. not a lovey dovey pair. No, they're, uh, they're daddy backs. Hit it and this quit is, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, these particular complex, they're particularly mean to each other. Yeah. They are. They all are, though. Hit it and just can't quit it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so there's daddy back loving, and then there's daddy back loving. And right. these were very clearly the latter. <laughs> it's, so Amy is sounding a little bit crude, but when it comes to daddy backs, that's not an inaccurate statement. The male is going to do his funky dance, entice her into his little nest, do his thing, and violently chase her away. Yeah. Yeah. That is daddy back <laughs> biology. Yeah. The way that I'm saying it is the nice way to say right. it. <laughs> yeah. Here's my thing about daddy backs. And this is pro- this is a conversation Amy and I were having a while back. Probably what appeals to me about daddy backs so much is I love bettas so much. So that whole like, you got to remove the female when they're done just doesn't it's, bother me. It's a normal. Yeah, it's, it's what normal. I'm used to dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, and keeping... A couple of 10, ga- 10 and 20 gallons with different brood stock and fish that don't get along. That just comes naturally to a better breeder. Yeah, it's right. like, okay, or, whatever. For, frankly, a killifish breeder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would consider these more or less like a saltwater betta or a, you know, or a killifish or yeah. something like that. It's like, it's the same mentality just applied to saltwater. And I think a lot of people get hung up on not. Like these things that we do all the time in freshwater, and then when it's presented to do it in saltwater, people are like, uh, "No, no, uh, that's just not okay." Yeah, I'm um, like, yeah. "Okay." <laughs> I would easily put a pair of Ilangatus, those groups, the Sunrise, and actually even an orchid in a twenty long. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Put up some dividers. Make sure there's some some clear 
places to get out of sight. Yeah. But yeah, I do those in a 20 line. Like a nice, very distinct rock pile for them to hang out yeah. with and then yeah. some hidey holes somewhere else. The neons just get slightly bigger. The neons are actually a weird one for me because they are actually of the quote unquote nice dotty packs. They're yeah. on the spectrum of like nice meaning like they'll get along with other fish in your tank. Yes. Are still retain a lot of their meanness for each other. <laughs> right. Right. It's and and a little bigger. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think uh <sighs> so but, ten gallons for a two inch fish, that should be fine. You know, I have to be okay with it. I, I'm yeah. not familiar enough with the fish. To disagree with you. I'm going with that. Let's Elon got us dotty backs. Those, as soon as we can get our hands on some of those, we're gonna. Yeah. And that's another one I think would fit that same category. Okay. So mm-hmm. I tried to find and that's why when you said Elongata this morning, I was like, What? Did you look at my <laughs> list? Like <laughs> Because it wasn't what it was on my list, but it was in the same vein, I felt like, because it's you know, a th- third yeah. smaller than the dotty backs we're used to seeing. Mm-hmm. 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 No, I think that's that's viable. Yeah. So if you can find them, I, let me know. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. There's still like five different fish I really want to talk about. And, and, and actually, uh, that's even like three genera and two other fish. I know. I'm not I supposed to. But, all right. So I'm just going to do one. And then... Hey, I had to cheat and do a speed round with some of mine for we'll, we'll you. We'll do a speed round with some of mine, too. <laughs> uh, I know that mine is on yours. Is it? I I mean, I haven't seen your list, but I can guess. Is Tank Ray's Dragonette on your list? No, because that's still a little small for one for me. The Ruby Red, that's tiny, but they're also tough. So here's this. Okay, so the Tank Ray's Dragonette's the okay. one. Okay, yeah, let's I'm talk it, about right? it. I want to talk yeah. about it. Species only tank. Mm-hmm. Not a pair. Target. Not green. Yeah, I think the green is just too big. They get too big. But the targets don't. Yeah. And I would do a yeah. target. I would do a ruby. I would do a scooter. Yeah. Tank raised eating pellets. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, can I just throw out the common name psychedelic dragonette? That yeah. is nice. That's because it's fun to say. That's mm-hmm. my favorite. Right. Um, that's... Uh, Syncarapus splendidus. I thought splendid was the... Oh, Syncarapus magnifica. Ah, I'm making shit up now. I don't remember. Is it the splendid or the magnificent? Right. I don't know. <gasps> the, but the, oh, the now I need to look green up. spotted dragonette tank raised eating pellets. 20 gallon tank, even 15 gallon tank. I mean, why not? It's a low me- metabolism fish. I have an argument to make here. Not I'm, that I'm, I'm disagreeing. Yeah, not I'm to in. disagree with you. I... Right. I think this is a fish that lends itself to be kept more similar to a lizard than it does to most other fish. You ready? I think I know what you're talking about. I think they deserve a food dish. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. They're very territorial, like not territorial feeders in that they're aggressive about their feeding grounds, which they, they are like they yeah. are, they'll push other fish away, but they will come to the same spot at the same time every day looking for food. I think if you're doing a species tank with a target dragonette, you should invest the time to train it to eat from a dish because why not? It if doesn't take a, much time. Yeah. A captive bred one. You just put the food there. Exactly. Yes. Even, the wild ones, it doesn't take much time for them to recognize. If they can recognize prepared foods as food, if you feed them in the same spot every day, they will get it in like a couple of days. Yep. Have you seen the feeders that I built for them that yeah. are like little mini caves you oh, can yeah. feed from the top because the tanks we had them in just had too much flow? <laughs> they Perfect. would just sit. They would start living in those little caves just <laughs> waiting for food to drop down on their heads. I would argue they are a predatory fish that feeds like an algae grazer. Yeah, you, that's you're not true wrong. I, yeah, I would constantly uh, eating, I would, like meticulously, like yes. yeah. as in they're gonna circulate the same ways every day. Yep. This is a marine hummingbird. Yeah, yeah you know, enough, yeah, yeah. I want to make a very, very strong point here. Tank raised eating pellets. Yeah. Captive bread. Yeah. Captive bread. Thank you. Not. Just tank raised, captive bred. Although, if it's tank eating raised pellets. eating pellets, the eating pellets is the important part. Yeah. 
It is, but I've seen tank raised ones that still did the grazing thing. Yeah. And the, the captive bred ones at feeding time, they ate a bunch of food. And when it wasn't feeding time, they were just, th- yeah. they were on that schedule. Yeah. So wild caught. Well, first, I'm not sure you should even keep a wild caught dragonet. Yeah, I'm unfortunately at that point. I may someday figure out how to do it, but I'm not sure. Captive bred green spots. They stay small. They eat like pigs. They voraciously take pellet food, put them in a 20 gallon tank. Yeah, Chubbs is I'm happy. the largest of that species I've ever seen. And she's still about half the size of the, you know. Yeah. She's sort of the exception that proves the rule. Like, okay, yes. If you condition it in a food, in a system with abundant live foods by themselves for years and then add them to a 220 gallon tank with enough live food for them. They sure, are. you can do it. She is just fine. <laughs> yeah. um, if you do that, great, do that. But who has that? Like, it was just the circumstances lined up so perfectly to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. That... I, I don't think it's like you can't replicate it. So for, so you all are caught up on exactly what we're talking about here. We had set up for a while, uh, some cube systems that we were growing massive amounts of Kato in. And we were experimenting with wild caught dragonets and having some success and some failures. And we had this target green spotted dragonette, whichever one you want to call her. And we were just watching her get thinner and get thinner and get thinner. She was very clearly starving before our eyes. As a last ditch, okay, I don't know what else to do. We stuck her in one of those refugiums. That is like dense Kato. Mm -hmm. Kato, Calerpa, hair algae, every... It was a non-maintained... It was a system that was being maintained, not being used for anything, and had light on it. (laughs) It (laughs) And it was definitely a... The fish is going to die... Let's put her in there, maybe just so we don't have to watch it anymore. Yeah. But we could not figure out how to keep her alive. And then we forgot about her. And about eight months later, we're digging around in that tank, and there out rolls this dragonette. <laughs> <laughs> this roly poly, barely could she like bounce mm-hmm. off, off the bottom in this like almost weightless boing. As she moved over to, and yeah, fat, yeah. thus the name Chubbs. Yep. That's what it took for us to get a very successful target dragonette. And she never ate Not frozen food. that that's the only way to do it. It's happened. Sometimes you get lucky. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of not getting lucky on those fish. Yeah. I'm tired of killing them. So that's why I went back to must be captive bred if you're going to do this kind of thing. And by the way, you got to keep it by itself. Because it is a slow, meticulous feeder, other fish will outcompete it for food in 20 gallons. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great way to do it. Yep. So I actually put it on my list because I think they're fun. Well, and the captive bred ones come in so small that you sort of need to put it in a small tank to grow it up too. Right. They come in small enough that I almost think it's worthwhile to like raise them up in a net breeder for a while in the actual tank for a while. Yeah. I agree. All right, Amy, what you got? All right, well, my last one I just chose, my favorite cleaner goby is the yellow line. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I, love that yellow color. Can I slightly intervene? Sure. Can we talk about the genus? Of course. Because it is one of the one of the genera I wanted to talk about. You know, I, kind of, is, I kind of figured that. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and, and oh, they're what? a new genus now. What? Oh, they're not goby is anymore? No. What are they now? I think it's a, a, Elantinoides. Oh, Elantinoides. There we go. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Um, okay, well, we've got the genus. Okay. Your favorite is the go- golden yes. line. Your favorite is the, is the... The classic neon cleaner. My favorite is the shark nose. Oh. Yep. They're like more okay. of a silvery... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. You guys are wrong, but I can't argue against you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the killifish thing all over again. Exactly. I, I only like the neons because I saw them like actually in the wild. And that, yeah, that gives them a little it bonus. It does. <laughs> but you go. Okay. I'm yeah, not, we just not take away. You I'm, talk about the fish because they're I mean, so cool. Cleaner gobies. Uh, the thing about a cleaner is they 
they don't know they're supposed to be afraid. Right. <laughs> it just, it doesn't occur to them that there are things that eat them. There's a big fish over there. Let's go say hi. Yeah, exactly. Like, ooh, let me, please, sir, may I, like, may <laughs> I assist your mouth, you today? Let me climb in. <laughs> <laughs> so what that means is they're a one inch fish that is happy to see you every day. Every day. <laughs> and so cute. The stripe on them any of them is bright and colorful i love the contrast of the yellow and blue but the blue and blue is pretty too the silver and blue is pretty too they're just great fish Uh, even in larger tanks i think that they have a really good spot but in small tanks they're they're a pet they're very active they're very outgoing and very fun to watch if you can establish a pair of any of those species they can be fine to me in a 10 gallon. Mm-hmm. And I, there's even some possibilities of harems. And I would be okay with two or three if you could get them to all get along in 10 gallons. Yeah. Yes, Our blue three. male is pretty sassy. Yeah. He's pretty sassy. I almost am tempted to try the gold lines we have in that tank instead. But that's just because they've been calm. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I push your envelope a little? Yes. How about a pair of neon gobies in like one of those, uh, I'm blanking. Oh, eight gallon all in ones. I think the challenge would be knowing the pair was established. Let's say you have established pair, like you, a known pair. Yeah, I'd totally do it. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't even question it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I just had um, to ask. Cause, water yeah. quality wise, I don't think it would be a problem. Mm-hmm. That I mean, they're virtually nothing. They're a skinny one, maybe one and a half inch fish. Right. Yeah, I, that, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Get that pair established carefully somehow. You know, deal with a quality store that's willing to get the pair established for you. Mm-hmm. Hi, we'll do that. <laughs> But yeah, for sure. Yeah, or, you know, be willing to swap back and forth. I I mean, if anybody is looking to bring home juvenile fish that pair off, that tend to not get along when they don't pair off, we recommend start with a group of juveniles, watch the pair establish, be willing to pull fish out when you need to. Right. So here's the situation I'm picturing this with. Okay. And this is specifically why I asked. Yeah. So let's imagine, imagine you have if you will. a 120 gallon reef in your home mm-hmm. and a eight gallon frag tank in your office. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 I think uh, like you're already bringing stuff back and forth. I think that if you had a colony of like five or six in the main tank, you identify your dominant pair. That's your fish for your tank in your office. Oh, yeah. That would be, be so fun. <laughs> Great idea. I would love that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. That covers... Nope, there's still more. I wish we could say more about them. It's just like there's no complications other than getting them to get along. Yeah, all of the species are available captive bred. Mm-hmm. They're all, they all come in eating pellet food easily. You know how easy it is to catch them? Stick your hand in there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll crawl all over it. Yep. Yeah, I love them. So, uh, I want to have a quick note on cleaners. Uh, I think people are really underappreciating how pet-like cleaners can be. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to specifically appeal to Amy here, specifically cleaner shrimp. Yes. Everyone, oh, yeah. all of our customers are shocked when they discover we train ours to get on our hands. Because it's fun. It's fun. And they like to. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you it's a shrimp that's a pet. Like, why aren't you doing this? <laughs> yeah. Pro tip, they do that in the wild too. Yeah. If you go scuba diving or snorkeling where there are cleaner shrimp and you stick your hand out, they'll climb on your hand. <laughs> and the fun thing to think about is they're doing it because they want to make you happy. <laughs> 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 like, like it's mutually beneficial. They're like... It is. You know, you look like you could use a nice cleaning. How can I help? <laughs> <laughs> pedicures. Get your pedicures. Uh huh. It's so sweet. Oh, wait, that'd be a manicure, but you know, <laughs> I, I mean, always, don't I put your feet up. in your tank. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, that's no. like a personal choice, but <laughs> not what I'd make. <laughs> 
<laughs> we should probably go on to the next fish. I just what you got, Charles. Is it cleaner? <laughs> no. Okay, good. What you got? I um sorry, I, I need a moment. Sorry, I, I'm gonna describe it to you. Just this is also for Nick to edit out because I definitely don't want people to know I said this. Leave it I'm in. picturing like someone like setting up, you know, like those foot soaks. Mm-hmm. Like little massagers. I'm picturing like they put like just the massager part in their sump and they're sitting in front of their tank. <laughs> <laughs> with the little cucumber mask. Yep, uh-huh. yep. Right. Yeah. You know, Nick. people actually do that with garas, right? <laughs> Gross. Okay. Anyway, Charles. To the list. Yep. To the list. 20 gallons. Okay. Am I going to argue oh, with you he's, again? He's raising his eyebrows. I'm worried. No, I'm raising my eyebrows because this is a different style of keeping tank than we've talked about today. Okay. Okay. 20 gallon pair of Bengay Cardinals breeding. Yeah. 20 is tight. It is. Almost every hobbyist I know who's bred them has done it in a 20. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. You're right. It's the, fine. I think they're one of the few fish that like the footprint and like the whole size of just the standard 20. Yeah. It, it like works to me. They don't, they're, I mean, they're, they look bulky because of all the finage and yes, they are, but they just like to hover in the water column. They're so, pretty, they're pretty mellow. So if you give them a, I feel like a 20 high and just baby them, love them. And I think this is a fish that lends itself to a macro algae tank. Oh Yeah. Because it's almost it's, the best way. Because it's got like that look. It's got that almost like a leafy sea dragon kind mm-hmm. of look, um, and that'll help with the water quality. Mm-hmm. That'll all this other stuff. And I'm like, generate a bunch of live food, a it, bunch of microorganisms for fry when they come out. Exactly. So I think a twenty high for a pair of Bengay Carnals. The idea being, you're trying to breed them. I would also encourage someone trying to do this. Um, when you know you have fry, just start hatching out live baby brine. They're, they're capable of doing it right off the bat. Um, I don't think a 20 high is going to be capable of producing enough food for them to sustain themselves, no. but it'll be nice treats as you go along. And a little bit of like a buffer zone of if you're not feeding enough, like it's nice to have a backup. Or you didn't catch it in the yeah, first day or two. Exactly. It's another one of those fish that... Getting the pair established is the challenge. That's the challenge. Do not keep these fish long-term in groups. No. You will end up with two. <laughs> if you're lucky. Right. Right. Um, but here's my pitch for this fish. I think this is the ideal fish for people making the jump from freshwater breeding to saltwater breeding. And I also think this is a fish that a lot of hobbyists should be considering breeding because... This is not a fish that is viable on a commercial scale. It's true. It is viable on a hobbyist scale. Yeah. And, um, you know, just at that production level, you could have a self-sustaining breeding hobby if you were thought ahead, plan ahead, um, you know, we're trying to build a rapport with like your local stores and stuff. There's, they're just a little hard to get right now because you can't get them wild caught and almost none of the aquaculture facilities are producing them anymore because at that scale, it's just, it's not. Actually, occasionally you can get them wild caught. You just shouldn't. Right. Ugh, gross. And the thing that makes them not viable commercially makes them desirable locally, True. which is small mm-hmm. brood size. Yeah. Um, trying to, like for one of those pelagic fish, trying to raise up 200 larval tiny things. If you're successful, then what? Right. But this, a dozen at a time, I'll tell you right now, on the air, we will take them. (laughs) All of them. them. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Every time. Because we'll sell them. Yeah, for sure. And, and, that's not something that's going to time out the way that if you're producing even clownfish, we'll take part of the first batch. Right. <laughs> and then when you have the next batch, we'll still have the first batch. <laughs> Those big fish, you know, that says something about the reproduction levels on reefs that clownfish only need to reproduce enough to replace themselves. And they produce three to 500 babies every two weeks for 25 years. Yeah. To replace themselves. Bengay cardinal fish produce about 20 or 30 once a month 
for about four years. But that's what it takes to replace themselves on the reef. Yeah. It's a tough life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a hard knock life. <laughs> Ugh. It's a fish eat fish world out there. That's right. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's a hobby, like a niche part of the saltwater hobby that people could, is way more attainable than I think a lot of people think it is. Yep. I agree. We need more. We need more. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, we need no, more. Like, I mean, we specifically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. All right. <sighs> Which one? So I need a, I, I got a main. Wait, I want Charles and I to brainstorm what we think you have left. Cause I can't think about it. Do you really? know? So there's one you guys probably don't know that much about. There's two that are like, come on guys. And then there's a group that are like, yeah, you should know these. There's all the hints I'm giving you. Like what gobies haven't we talked about? I... I have a guess, and I think it's kind of stupid. But Wait, I'm, I'm stupid? picturing you having like a like this is your high end version of this list. No, none of these are high end fish. So mm. I'm just gonna say my guess. Okay, Catalina goby though. No, I thought about that one, but it's it's just a little too specialized. Yeah, yeah. You could do a Catalina goby in a 20 gallon tank as long as you had a chiller. It, that's what made it high end but, for me. Yeah. Mm, did you go back to <laughs> sargasm fish? Nope. Hmm. No, I, I've got nothing. The ultimate nano fish. Oh, Trima gobies. Yeah. Uh, oh, pfft. Jesus. Gee, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. And actually, it's the, the genus Trima and the genus Iviota. Yep. Mm, which they're mm-hmm. really, they actually used to be the same genus for a while. Um, but specifically, my favorite is Trima cana, which is the banded Trima goby. Yeah. I didn't put them because I left them for you and yeah. then I completely <laughs> forgot and about them. them. Yeah. Um, we had five or six of those in a five and a half gallon tank. We're talking about gobies that max out some of them at three quarters of an inch. Yeah. It's They're just fantastic. Not going to be relevant for water quality, but we got five or six of them in a one or two gallon critter keeper right now. And, and they're and getting they're along great. Fine. <laughs> yeah. For context, they are in our retail system. Yes. So yeah. there's water exchange, but they're in that right. space and they're like, eh, whatever. This is same old. They're teeny little fish that would get lost in Every big system I can think of. Yeah. Some of them have some pretty cool symbiotic relationships with corals. Mm-hmm. Some of them with gorgonians, some with soft corals, some with hard corals. I mean, they're just could they're just cool. Could you replicate any of that symbiotic relationships in a small tank? What size tank would you have to do to pull that off? Well, I mean, it, it depends on the species and the coral. But yeah. if you could grow the, you could grow just about any of the smaller corals, like the corals that have small polyps, like not the big huge. Like, do you think you polyps, could but, fill? If you trimmed them, do you think you could fill a small tank with gorgonians and have it sure have them yeah. not suffer sure. from it and grow them well? They're soft corals, so they're not going to use a ton of minerals. Right. Like a full forest of gorgonians trimmed to be kind of mini. I've also seen some pretty sweet five gallon pasilipora tanks. Now just, you're that's now there's I'm the high end version it. of yeah, it, right? Yeah. That's gonna cost more than the, the chiller is for your Catalina gobies. And, um, and you know, you, <laughs> then you, you do Trima's and clown gobies. <laughs> you, you might be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those they cannot go without mention. Lots of them are being produced captive bred on a regular basis. Yes, they're a little pricey, but you didn't spend a much much on your five gallon tank. So just mm-hmm. fork out the extra money for the Trimas. Um, they're hearty. They're eating pellet foods, water quality. Yes. You do got to pay attention to it, but you're keeping a saltwater tank. Come on guys. You got to pay attention to water quality. They are tiny, tiny fish. So there's a risk like clownfish would eat them. Yeah. That's the critter keeper guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. But they're stunning. You don't need any other fish. The trimacana, the banded trimagobi is really distinct red and white alternating bands. I think I like the spotty one better. Mm, you're wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. You're wrong, and that's okay, too. Right. <laughs> We're well, all winners ones at are this gorgeous table. Too. I, I have a thing for stripes. I know that. That's I, fair. I think they're amazing little fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I would, I would say that 
it, 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 that almost should have been a goby to start the conversation because they're the best nano fish, I think. You might be right. I, it was almost like just assumed by me, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because we would get there and they're perfect. I can't think of any other fish that I'm completely comfortable. Maybe even you could go smaller than two gallons with a single tree magobi. Would we put one in the reef bowl? And that's Maybe. more, that's probably a two or three gallon bowl. Oh, then yeah. Heck yeah. Let's put it in there for sure. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I really want that. Now I'm trying to picture that bird nest. Have you seen how fast it's been growing? I know it looks great. <laughs> so I'm trying to picture like, and that gets nice and full and like yeah. a tree we perched in it. Yep. Is there a, um, like a branching SPS specialist trema? Probably. Probably. We'll, we got to do some research about that. We if you will. can find that one, yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, I think the Eviota actually would be. Oh, okay. But yeah, we should find out. Okay, so I got more, one more on my list. You got one more. Do you got an alternate? Wait. Or did you cover them all? I pretty much covered them all. Okay. But this isn't me trying to tell you your your list is done. This is me saying I got one more and yeah. then I want to. Then I definitely want to talk about what's left on your list. I'm going to flash through the ones, the, the remaining ones on my list. So I, I alluded to this one a few times, but I put it on here because we said 20 gallons or less. And our debate was, is 10 gallons too big, too small for it? So I put purple firefish, 20 gallons, fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, I would do a purple firefish or an orange firefish in a 20, but that's... I would not go any smaller than that. Yeah. And I'd prefer them in a 20 long, actually, not a 20 high. Same. Yeah. They, um, I, I just want them to have that spot, the areas to dig around. And I also feel like a tank with firefish. I think a 20 long with a firefish and um, a shrimp goby pair is a viable 20 gallon quote unquote community. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. And so, um, I personally think you can go a little bit smaller than a 20, but uh, I I felt it was worthwhile in this podcast just for the joke, but also because everyone at this table is like, 20 gallons, firefish, fine. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So, uh, bicolor blennies and tailspot blennies. Oh, yeah. I didn't even go there. Tailspots I'd actually do in a... Maybe a 10, for sure a 15. A 10 designed around them. Yeah. But like a 20, any yeah. 20. <laughs> Blennies are a pet. Yes. <laughs> yes. There are a couple other Blennies in the genus. I think it's Asinius or something like that. Yeah, I think so. But it's a huge genus. My Blennies are in the same genus. And I would not put that in a 20 gallon tank. It's a five inch fish. Well, that and they're the one zippy. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's a it's a digression. But what do you guys think about the fangs? That came up a lot when I was looking at nano saltwater fish, quote unquote. So here's my response to that. Cool. People are breeding them in tens. Really? Yeah. My response was going to be active open water swimming fish. That's what I would have yeah. said. Yeah, but they also like they just they hover in open water. They do. They're That's not true. like darty. Yeah. I don't know. It came up like consistently when I was looking at saltwater nano fish. Like I, it feels the wrong. Mayacanthus, they were always up there. I, I guess we'd have to then put them as a, maybe that's a possibility. I would say, uh, cautiously. Yeah. But like 20 gallon, I, I guess. It's like, yeah. I probably wouldn't do it, but I don't think I'd judge you for it either. No, I think that's a good way to yeah. say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Atlantic Pygmy Angel. In a 20? In a 20. That mm. actually is really exciting to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's your only fish. Yep. Yeah. That's it. And it's got to be a tank that you are taking proper care of, but you want to talk about a pet fish. Yeah. I would like, <laughs> I would want it to be a 20 long, well decorated. See, I would go 20 high. You think? But decorated to the back to the top yeah because they 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 do a lot of vertical up and down swings. like you just need to give them the space to peck yes that's just yep if it's an angel fish it's gotta it's gotta peck yeah um and then a geometric pick me hawk <sighs> mm. 
Mm-hmm. I can't believe I didn't think of that. Yeah, that's. Uh, I put a falco hawk and I didn't think of that. Yeah, but okay. So technically, a geometric pygmy hawk is not a hawk. That's true. It's an anthias. That might have been what I was looking for, like in my head when I was thinking about the sunburst. Yeah, because they have a similar similar body shape. Yeah, Plec- plectra plectranthius. Enormous. Say that ten times fast. No, I, just, <laughs> I have a hard time saying it one time slow. <laughs> but yes, the geometric pyg- pygmy hawk—they max out at about two inches. They are very reclusive. They feed just fine. We had one in a forty for a while, and it was one of those fish that, yeah, I don't think it's in there. I haven't seen it for like two weeks, and like two months would go by, and we're like, dude. It's like right out in front. And there it is. And there it is. That reminded me of that starry goby. That's a very similar yes. behavior of fish. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I yeah. feel like a lot of people are going to, and this is me just trying to poke you a little bit, are going to look at me being like Swiss guard basslet and they're like, oh, fine. And then he says, Atlantic pygmy angel. Because <laughs> pygmy angel stains much smaller. They do say they smaller, do. but I don't think, I think uh, the mentality I was having wasn't size was, Everyone's going to say angelfish. Right. <laughs> yeah. So to I me, I seriously it's a, considered it and I thought that you would talk me out of it. Really? No, it's body <laughs> shape. It's that, that round body shape is I want to go around and explore crevices. Mm-hmm. A long, narrow body shape is I want to dart around stuff. Yeah. So that's fair enough. That's my argument there. And that's why, all right, I'm conceding that a 20 long for some of those long, skinny fish and a 20 high for some of the round fish that are active and. <sighs> Pushing the envelope yeah. a little bit. That 20 high that you're describing with the angelfish and the, like a pair of cleaner shrimp. Yeah, perfect. That would look like just a tiny little cross section of a reef. Yeah. 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 This list for me was definitely pushing the envelope and you and I don't like doing that most right. of the time. But right. this list, I feel like for me personally, it, it had to be done. But let's face it. That's the concept. That's the whole purpose behind a nano tank. Yeah. Behind a nano reef. Can I do it small and what can I do successfully? Because there's a fine line between what can I get away with and what can I pull off? Yeah, it's and nev- I know those are never should similar. be what can I get away with. Right. Yeah. Because right. the paradigm in reef keeping for so long was go big or don't do it. Right. And so nano reefs are definitely kind of like they've been around, but there's they still feel new. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, yeah. So uh, this entire list, even a lot of the stuff I put on there like 10 years ago would not, this would have been a very different list for me 10 years ago. Right. Um, none of the basslets, none of the, they would not have been on my list. No, I agree. <laughs> One of the big arguments you could use against a pygmy angel is how long they live. If you are going to set up a 20 gallon nano tank for a pygmy angel, plan on keeping that tank for 20 years. Yeah. But hear me out. Sure. It's a pet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like we have two Atlantic pygmy angels downstairs right now. Yes. They are very outgoing. They are pets. They have already figured out who feeds them and who doesn't. Right. And they have preferences. <laughs> but okay. Uh, if you want to do Bangai cardinal fish. Yeah. It's not a really long commitment. That's a five to six year fish. That's mm-hmm. as long as they live. They're one of the shorter lived Saltwater fish. Yeah. Well, and even pygmy angels are intelligent. Like they yes. are, they want, they need to be engaged. I feel like it's a fish that would, um, I think, you have me sold on this 20 gallon idea because if you're dedicating a tank to this fish, this opens a whole new realms of how you can keep it specifically. Like mm-hmm. if you have it in a 200 gallon tank, it's going to get kind of lost in the crowd a little bit. Not in a bad way. Only a little though. I've, we've, I've got one. No, I mean specifically if it's your only fish, that means all the time oh, right. that you would be spending on yeah. 20 fish could be devoted to trying to train. You are going to start having conversations with that fish. Yeah. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's going to respond. Yeah. Speaking of training, you need to ask me about Wookiee later when we're not recording. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I I think that's my list. There's a couple of them on here that I'm just, I'm just not going to talk about because it's, they break my heart. So (laughs) some you could pull off if you did it right and the stars aligned and that's, that's not what we're about. So yeah, there's my list. 
like most of these, you got to start from the place of loving them. Yes. I think the 20 gallon tank saltwater tank specifically lends itself to this is not a community. This is my pet saltwater fish Mm -hmm. and a plan. Yeah. It's not a, I'm going to start a saltwater 20 gallon tank. I have my tank. I have my rock. There's my lights. There's my pump. It's set up. It's running. Let's go pick out some fish. Yeah. No. What can I put in it? That's when you got to be in that big, big tanks are better. Like if you don't yeah. want to come up with a plan, start with a 125 yeah. uh, and the plan will kind of arrange itself around there. Right. If you're doing a 20 or smaller, make a plan. Before you start, I would say a thirty or smaller. Yeah, yeah that's probably true. <laughs> Ideally, any tank. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah. you gotta. And then design it around that fish because that twenty gallon for that pygmy angel, as we talked about, is going to be an extremely different twenty gallon than the one for the Bengay Cardinals. Yeah, <laughs> or the Dotty backs, or the right on down the line. But I think any of them could be just as beautiful, just as active, just as fun to keep especially if it's the fish you love. Right. Agreed. So what did we miss? Yeah, there's got to be something. Somebody gave me some comments about some fish that you think are fantastic long-term for the life of the fish for a 20-gallon tank or smaller. Mm -hmm. Something you think, you know, people don't get enough of this fish with this excitement of 20-gallon or nano reef tanks. This is something that fi- people should think about. And I don't know how you guys missed us. Let us know what that fish is. I want to find out. Yeah, we'll definitely post a little discussion question on Facebook. Um, letting us know what nano tanks have you kept? What fish do you think would be good for a nano? Um, be sure to give us a review on iTunes if you're enjoying these episodes. Um, or if you're not, we'd love to hear what type of episodes you'd love to see in the future as well. If we said something you disagree with, let us know. Let's have an open, cool discussion about it. We do, we do actually like that. Yeah. Be civil, though. Yeah. Be civil. We'll, we'll keep it civil, too. <laughs> keep it as civil as we did with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for listening. This was a really cool discussion. I'm hoping it's going to lead to some really cool ideas. Let's have lots of fun and keep those hands wet.